state of Texas, there is a single student-run organization, TJCSGA, that works in order to promote the cause of all community college students at the local, regional, state, and even national levels. The purpose of student government is to give all students a voice and to allow students opportunities to take on leadership roles, building their work ethic by planning events and participating in service activities. In SGA, an idea is first presented and then voted upon, much like the process the United States government follows itself, making SGA a place where students can come together to share ideas and concerns and to work to improve their communities and schools. Every year, TJC SGA hosts a statewide convention that brings together over 70 member colleges and thousands of students from all across Texas in order to compete and earn recognition for their schools and to show off all the hard work they put in to make the colleges and even our government work for our students. This past April, the state convention was held at the Marriott Hotel in Addison, and the theme for the convention was a new kind of Texas. Each year, there is a theme that is decided upon by the e-board at the state level in order to give schools a direction for planning out the events they hold on campus, what awards they want to compete for, and how they will present their school at competitions. We here at Richland College interpreted the theme to mean progress, progress and innovation. There are several awards to compete for, but our SGA was particularly excited about Scrapbook and the Event of the Year awards. We wanted to show how far our SGA, as well as Richland itself, has come, improving over time through the efforts of our dedicated students and wonderfully supportive advisors. We were very confident in our submissions and even went on to win first place in both. Um, sorry. In addition to awards, TJC SGA holds workshops committee meetings, general assemblies, and even invite special guest speakers to present throughout the entirety of the three-day convention. These workshops and meetings are designed to teach students, valuable, teach students valuable lessons, like how to be a leader, the importance of having a good work ethic, and how to hold a productive business meeting. All the while, familiarizing us with the governmental procedures and making legislative, legislation more accessible. Although it's not all business meetings and hard work, of course. We may be a bunch of nerds, but we still like to have fun. There's, a huge, there's huge dinners in the dining hall. There's lots of music and dancing. And even we even had a glow-in-the-dark toga party. Um, all to allow students to unwind and take a break from playing dress-up and to enjoy themselves and network with other motivated and involved individuals. I believe and that I can speak for everyone who has attended any of the SGA conferences in saying that they are extremely valuable and eye-opening experiences. I sincerely recommend to anyone who may have any of these opportunities or is interested in becoming more involved to consider attending. I promise you won't regret your decision. I yield the floor to our historian, Hannah No, and our treasurer, Sam Matthew. So good evening, everybody. Thank you for for joining with us at the meeting today. So my name is Hannah. My name is, uh, I'm historian of Student Government Associations. So my duties is uh, make our social media and then take a pictures of its events. So today um, we will be give an check from one of the biggest events. Our organization took part of the last year in game with the higher official ensuring the student voice are here here with its Community College Day. So Community College Day is one of the biggest four days events that student government associations take part in every year for ensuring the students and our society's voice are heard. Is it a good opportunity for students to share their voice and they change what they want to bring to the committee? community by meeting with uh, several senators and how representative at the Texas tax capital. Yes. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for our, uh, our general section. My name is Sam Matthew, I'm the treasurer. So I'll be continuing from here. So in 2018 fall semester, nine students, including SGA officers, our senators, and our advisor had the opportunity to be a part in the Community College Day. We did bring up several proposals such as transfer bill from four, two year to a four year college, student textbooks tax, equal pay among genders, increasing the minimum pay rate DACA 
guns on campus and various other bills that have not been passed yet. We had the opportunity to get appointments with the Texas Senators and Representatives and made them aware of the issues that we as a student are facing in our community and our viewpoints. We are happy to say that one of the proposals that we shared which at the state, the transfer bill, which was related to measures to facilitate the transfer, academic process, and timely graduation of students in public higher education for transferring from two-year to a four-year university was received by the Secretary of the Senate on March 7, 2019, and was signed by governor and became effective by June 14, 2019 and is available to the public through Texas legislation website, Senate Bill 25, Section 86. This is one of the biggest achievements we did last year and we will be continually doing the same by coming years. Thank you. I yield the floor to the parliamentarian. Thank you, Sam. Um, good afternoon. I'm Avery Self, and I'm the parliamentarian for SGA. Um, I'd like to tell you all a little bit about my first outing with SGA, uh, which was last fall's Region 2 conference, uh, fall 2018. And it was the first trip that I had taken with SGA, my first experience outside of Richland with um, any members, any uh, district members, statewide members, anything like that. Um, it was held in Gainesville, Texas, which is a little bit north of Denton. And um, after we got there in the morning, then we were able to mingle with the other members of SGA of other chapters for a few minutes, maybe 30 minutes or so. And um, then we had our first General Assembly. And through that, I was able to learn about the process that they do with, you know, here we have only a few people here. We have maybe um, the same number of officers, but we have less uh, General Assembly. There they have a huge General Assembly, so they have to be very tight with the rules, everything like that. And so... I was able to see how that worked firsthand there for the first time, and um, I'm really happy that I was able to do that. Um, so the one thing that really stuck out to me about the people who were there, the people at that conference, were that they all had one similarity with me, for sure, one similarity, and that was our involvement with SJA, of course. And what that meant to me was that we all, we all had one thing in common for values, and that is that we all wanted to learn and grow uh, as individuals but at the same time, help something that's bigger than ourselves. Help the SGA at the region level, in this case. And, um, and uh, so that, that really spoke to me because it's, like, it's a cool experience to have with people who are like-minded, such as yourself. Um, the thing that I was able to do there uh, at the committees, they have different committees, as uh, April was talking about, uh, for each, I guess, uh, category that they deal with. The awards committee was what I was on. And they dealt with uh, picking out of our district the winners of scrapbook, the winners of uh, chapter of the year, things like that. Um, and we did really well at Region 2 uh, at that conference, uh, which I was very happy about. Um, let's see. Um, there's more committees than just awards, though. A lot of people always, I hear, will say um, that, you know, awards is, is, uh, is boring. You know, it's not worth it to go because you just have to sit in a room for pretty much three hours. Um, but the good thing is, I did get to talk to a lot of people. And my experience with the awards committee, I think, helped me because it's the formalities, you know. So if, if you understand the formalities in pl at play behind the scenes, then you can understand the scene itself much better. And so uh, that's what I really liked about being part of awards committee. But if that doesn't suit you, there's lots of more committees that you can be a part of if you go travel with us, any of our SGA um, conferences this year. Uh, so with that... That concludes my report, and I yield the floor to our secretary, Hazem. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you, Avery. Uh, my name is Hazem, and I'm your SGA secretary. Um, I'm just here to tell you about a conference that we attended last spring. Uh, mainly, Region 2 conferences are meetings for all SGAs of all junior colleges in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to uh, come together. And as you heard from Avery, fall conferences are usually focused on discussing issues and important news and recruiting people for their various committees. But for the spring conference, it's a little different. The spring conference is focused on giving out awards that are submitted, uh, that are submitted for the contests and finalizing resolutions to be submitted at the upcoming uh, state convention that April was talking about. 
Um, last spring, Richland won the majority of the awards, including best event. We won uh, scrapbook of the year. We won so many more. You can see like all the pictures on like like all around campus, like us holding like nine, ten, eleven certificates of us winning. That's that that is what usually happens like every uh, every year, and so. Um, Workshops were also done to uh, improve participant leadership skills and general college skills because they want you to leave with a lot more than you came in with. And so a lot of, um, a lot of college skill uh, workshops that they had involved transferring to universities, what's the best way to transfer, how to do it, how to write a proper resume, things that every college student should have like pretty much nailed down so they can like enter the workforce with like... Um, I'd say a boost, like getting in there faster than everyone else. And so all in all, just the spring conference really does set the tone for the TJC SGA state convention that happens shortly after because there's usually like a month or two difference between them. So it really does set the tone. It shows you what's about to happen in state, but in a smaller, more controlled environment, as Avery mentioned, because they're more uptight than our normal SGA, but less uptight than state SGA. This does conclude my report. I yield the floor to our Secretary of State, Thaha. Thank you, Hazim. Hi, my name is Taha Kazi. I'm the Speaker of the House for SGA. Um, I'm here to talk about the last SGA elections for executive board officers. Um, the executive board elections happen every spring semester, sometime in April. We had one of the best turnouts we've ever had. It was great. Uh, and besides myself and the president, Edward, uh, there was stiff competition for each position on the executive board. We had a campaign week um, where all the candidates campaigned for using uh, posters, flyers, and like standard one-to-one -one with individual students. The elections were very successful, and the voter turnout was more than double than what we had last year. Uh, we still have committee chair positions open, so if anyone is interested, and getting more involved in the SDA, just talk to one of us. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, new group of executive officers and hope to serve everyone to the best of our abilities. Um, our goal is to be a voice for all the student body and make a change where it is needed. This concludes my report. I yield the floor to Vice President Kimberly. All right, thank you, Taha. Um, good afternoon, y'all. BP Kimberly here, and I am very privileged to talk about one of the most memorable SGA events that I believe our chapter has ever had. Um, this event is called um, was called Richland Votes with America, a voter rally. It's also known as Texas Matters. Also known as, yes, Ugly Betty, Liza Koshi, and Alicia Keys were here. Um, now for context, fall of 2018 was already amazing in regards to our voter registration success. From a series of voter re registration days, we garnered a whopping 1,143 new voters within just five days before our big voter rally event. The voter rally was made possible because of Student Voter Initiative and also Voto Latino. We brought this, uh, the trio onto campus to speak on the value of Texas youth turning out at the polls, and the trio consisted of just a little artist by the name of Alicia Keys, award-winning actress America Ferreira, and YouTuber Liza Koshi. They were all here stressing the value of exercising one's right to vote and using each other's, using each of our voices. They really demonstrated how celebrities can use their platform to spread such positivity and be involved in the community's well-being. They talked about reclaiming the individual power, voting for positive change, and doing what one can to keep our politicians accountable. Students, including myself and our guests, were on stage in front of an incredibly packed audience. Energy was high, but that was not just fueled from the banshee screams of Alicia Keys fans. We saw results, and those results were the powerful messages that those three women spread. Um, they were invoking reactions of frustration, interest, and ultimately hope from our peers. And there was also the record high turnout of 3,000 upwards to 5,000 of our students in the crowd. And many individuals of that crowd paraded to Guadalupe to guide voters and or vote themselves. Afterwards, many, vote, many turned to social media to share the fun event along with the info about getting out to vote. And I'm happy to report that our goals were met and far exceeded. There was a post-event roundtable discussion um, directed and helped by our lovely Richland student media team. And our three guests and several student leaders representing different clubs shared their voting stories and concerns of representation among, amongst many topics. 
Everyone had the chance to ask questions regarding voting as well as the legislative and social influence on voting. The good energy and conversations of that day reminded us why we do what we do in SGA. We do it for all of y'all, and we can best help y'all if we continue to hear from as many of y'all as possible. So do keep the stories coming. Finally, shout out to any of y'all that participated in that beautiful day or who has ever helped anyone understand their rights. Um, that concludes our report. I do yield the floor to our president of SGA, Edward Cisse. Okay. Um, thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you, everybody. Um, my fellow students, as you just heard, the Student Government Association accomplished a lot in 2018 and 2019 school year. I would like to thank the eBoard for giving you updates on what SGA did during this time. I would like to review a couple of highlights from last year as I address you. These are just some of our 2018-2019 accomplishments. Sam recently sp Sam spoke about Community College Day, which happens every two years. Community college, community college students from all over Texas go to Austin to meet with state Congress members and discuss topics that affect students. You also heard about T um, Texas Junior College Student Government, short acronym, TJCSGA, Region and State Conference, where Richland received many awards for our accomplishments. And as state, as a state, we passed several resolutions. That's great. Finally, Kimberly told you about the Richland Voters Registration Drive and the voters rally with Alicia Keys. We will we, we still feel the impact from from that wonderful events till today. Something new that you don't know yet is that SGA was able to present, present the Richland College administration with a number of proposals for change on campus. All of these suggestions came from students just like you. You are pleased, we are pleased to announce that all of those suggestions were approved and are in impl implementation phases. Don't be surprised if every, oh, sorry, don't be surprised if very soon you see outdoor signs about our white life, elevator signage that is consistent across campus, or if you don't, if you get to ride in a new college van. Thank you. This concludes my report. I yield the floor to our advisor to speak to you about some changes coming in the near future. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, Edward. Um, good afternoon. Uh, now that we've covered the past, I want to address some up ch upcoming changes for the future. Many of you may have heard by now that the district is planning to merge into one college. I want to explain a little bit of the why behind this move and how it's going to benefit you. All right. Um, in order to be considered a reputable college, a college must be accredited. So kind of think of that like a doctor needing a license. right? Uh, currently, each college within the district is individually accredited. So even though we're a district, we are each individually our own colleges. This is why when students graduate, they graduate from individual colleges like Richland and not from the district. Keep this in mind as I continue. Uh, there is a mandate that states to graduate from any particular college with a degree, you must complete 25% or about 15 credit hours of your degree program from that individual college. That's about five classes. Um, and many of you might be taking classes on more than one campus, all right? Uh, the district does encourage this, but it can create some challenges for you as students. Imagine this. It's your last semester here at Richland and you are so ready to graduate, but you need still need to get six credit hours from Richland to meet that 25% threshold. And then you need 12 credit hours total to finish your degree plan. So basically you need four classes total, two of them have to be from Richland. Um, what if only one of those classes was offered at Richland? What would you do? You would be stuck. You wouldn't have a choice. You, um, as things stand now, you would have to either take an extra semester in order to get that final class that you needed from Richland. Um, that, that's your only choice. <laughs> that's what you would have to do. Um, and then if you're taking advantage of FAFSA, that means you might need to take extra classes beyond that 
to receive your financial aid at all. So no doubt this would frustrate you. Would you agree? Yeah, that would be very frustrating. So once the district becomes one college, it shouldn't matter where you take your classes because we're one college. We have one accreditation, one license, okay? Um, so that, that's gonna be a huge benefit for you guys. Uh, the transition itself is going to be a long process. We've actually already been working on it for a couple of years. Um, so it might not affect some of you directly. The projected timeline has this process completed and functional by June of 2020. So that's next year. Um, and I know that there are still a lot of questions um, and I don't have all the answers, um, but I assure you that the student government and myself, I will keep you as informed as I can as, thing, as I learn things. Um, but in the meantime, uh, if you're curious, ask. All right, we wanna try and help you to understand what's going on. Now the district chancellor is going to be on campus next month, November 20th, and the SGA executive board will be meeting with him directly. So if you have very specific questions that you want answers from him, get those questions to these guys and they will get you your answers. Um, thank you, and this conclu concludes our officer reports. I yield the floor to the president to continue the meeting.